So now that we've talked about the structure and functionality of the search stream gang driver program, the thing that kind of sets all the wheels in motion and runs all those tests, I'd like to start talking about other aspects of the framework. And the whole goal of this is to try to get across the point that writing functional code doesn't just mean using only the functional features in Java. It can also mean combining the functional features in Java, like Lambda expressions and method references and functional interfaces and streams with the more traditional object-oriented features. And so we're going to see how we can combine those things to good effect. So if we go into the stream gangs folder, we'll see that there's several other classes that form the basis for a framework of implementation strategies. And remember what a framework is. A framework is an integrated set of classes and objects that collaborate to provide a reusable architecture for a family of related applications. So in this case, we have a bunch of classes that are related by implementation and or inheritance or extension. And they provide a reusable architecture, something that can be customized and extended and overridden and so on for a family of related applications. So the family here would be all these different implementation strategies that show off different concurrency and parallelism features in modern Java and being able to do the apples to apples comparisons that we want to do with respect to performance and also just functionality. So this is where object-oriented programming makes its entrance. So object-oriented programming is extremely good about dealing with structure and that's what we're going to leverage here. So we're gonna have a, an abstract class called stream gang and this class implements the runnable interface, which means it's gonna have a run method, which is gonna be how we start a given implementation strategy doing its thing. And this is basically at the heart of all the other implementation strategies. So just real quick, I, I won't go through every method here, but this is the base of the framework. So we have ourselves a list of, of input. We have an executor. We have some other stuff that I'm not gonna talk about. We have an get input method that returns the, the input that we're using, in our case, that's the works of Shakespeare, of course. We have a way to set that field. We have ways to set executors. And then there's a method called get next input. Notice that's an abstract method. So a subclass of stream gang has to fill it in. Notice there's also a method called initiate stream, which is also abstract. And that's gonna be used by the framework to start things up and running. And then there's a couple of other methods here we're not gonna talk much about, but uh, here's the run method. When the run method is called, that's the method that's implementing the run method that is part of the runnable interface. That's going to get the next chunk of input, in this case, the works of Shakespeare, initiate the stream, and then wait for everything to be done. So that's kind of the core base class, and that's inherited by other parts of the program. The next piece of the puzzle here is a subclass of stream gang called search stream gang. And this is going to factor out lots of common code that's used by all the different implementation strategies in the search stream gang case study. And this will provide concrete implementations of things like where do we get the input, char the input character sequences from, where do we get the list of phrases, and then there's a bunch of other helper methods that we'll talk about in more detail as we go through some of the implementation strategies in more detail. So here's some of the fields. We have the phrases to find, which is that list of strings we talked about. We have an iterator to a list of character sequences, which we use to get the inputs. We have a constructor that takes the phrases and the lists of, of lists of inputs to search, and it stashes those things away in these fields so that they can be accessed by the different implementation strategies that are going to subclass from, from uh, search stream gang. We then have the get next input method, which checks to see if there's anything left in the iterator. If there's not, we're done. Otherwise, we go ahead and get the next list of character sequences to process. So we could actually do this for more than just the works of Shakespeare. We could do the works of Shakespeare and the works of um, uh, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien or the works of uh, uh, J.K. Rowling. You know, whatever you want to do, you could have lots of works in here that you could search, if you, assuming you could get the, the text for some of those things. Down here, we have the initiate stream method, and this is very cool. What this does is it's going to start a timer running, and this timer will time how long it takes to execute the process stream hook method. And as we'll see, the process stream hook method is, 
is really the entry point into each of these different implementation strategies. So we'll take a look at that in a second. We'll also come back in a second and look at the, the timer mechanism because it's super cool. And after we run the timer, then we go ahead and print the results just to see what happened for that implementation strategy. Notice this is code that's generic code that's reused by all the different implementation strategies. Print results is a very cool method. We'll, we'll take a closer look at this as we need to. This goes ahead and prints the results out. There's also something called print phrases, which we'll talk about later when we talk about the strategies. There's something called search for phrase, and search for phrase is the thing that uses the phrase match splitterator. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. There's also some other helper methods that, for example, get a title from a work of Shakespeare. And then the last method here, which is just an abstract method, is called process stream. And this is a hook method that has to be overridden by a concrete implementation strategy like search with sequential stream or search with parallel stream or search with parallel splitterator and so on. And, and that's what actually does that particular implementation strategy. And you can see if you come up here, uh, back over where the initiate stream hook method gets called, that passes process stream as a method reference into the run timer time run method. And before we leave this class, I want to go show you the timers because they are super clever and cool. So we define a, a little helper class called run timer. And what the purpose of this class is, is it's going to simplify timing the computation of logic and doing it in a consistent way so that we can have these apples to apples comparisons between the different implementation strategies. So the way this works is we keep a map mapping the name of the test with the time taken to run the test. So that's this hash map. We keep track of the start time. We keep track of the execution time, which is just the end time, uh, so subtracting the start time from the end time to get the execution time. We have a couple of helper methods, start timing, which records the current nano time, the current time of day in nanoseconds. So it's very precise timer. And we stash that away into start time. We have a stop timing method that basically takes the current time, subtracts the start time, and then divides that by a million to get the execution time in milliseconds, because otherwise it would be in nanoseconds, which is too fine grain. And then we have a couple of cool time run methods. This is the one that we actually use. So if we go back here to search stream gang, which is where we just were a second ago, we pop back over here, you can see that we call time run passing in a method reference and that method reference is treated as a supplier. So we have a supplier that's passed in as a method reference. So we have the supplier and we have the name of the test. And the way that the time run method works, we start the timer, which takes a snapshot of the current time of day in nanoseconds. We call the get method on the supplier. Because remember, supplier is a functional interface. It has one method called get. It goes ahead and gets, it calls get, and that runs the test. So that'll take however long it takes to run this thing. That'll run process stream. We get a result back, which will be the result. In this case, it's a list of list of search results, but it's genericized for the purposes of this reusable run timer class. We then stop the timing. And then we put into the results map the name of the test and the time it took to execute it. So when we're all done, we're going to have this map that keeps track of all this information. There's also another ver variant of this that uses a runnable instead of using a supplier, but it's the same basic idea. And then there's another cool method that we're going to talk about later called get timing results. And this, as you can see, returns a string. So after we're all done running all the tests, and if we, we come back over here, you can see that at the end of running all the tests, we're going to print the timing results. So that's calling this method we're about to look at. And so what get timing results does is it goes ahead and makes a string builder because we're going to build up a string piece by piece. And then we go ahead and get the entry set for our results map, which is a basically a set of map entries that map strings, the names of the tests, with longs, the time they took to execute in milliseconds. We then convert that to a stream. So we have a stream of map entries. And then we go ahead and we swap the key and the value pairs, because we want the values to show up first, followed by the key. We want the execution times to show up before the names of the tests. Once we do that, by using the map call, 
we then sort these elements by key. So we're gonna sort the entries in the map, in the stream rather, by their key. So basically we're sorting them by execution time. So the faster execution times show up first. And then for everything that's left in the stream, we're gonna go ahead and format the output. And you can see what this looks like when we're all done. We have nicely formatted output, which is sorted. It puts the name of the, the name first, or sorry, the, the execution time first, followed by the test name. And it spits it out in the, basically, in the order that's been sorted. So we print it out in sorted order. So if we come back over here and look back at the run timer class, this just goes through and formats the output. So we end up with a string builder object with all these pieces put together. And the last thing we do is we convert that into a string and that gets sent back to the search stream gang test and we print that result. So that's how the result gets done. So what I'm trying to show you here is there's a bunch of helper classes that are part of this inheritance hierarchy that we can reuse and they help to make the program more effectively structured and a lot cleaner and easier to understand. And they're also using a whole boatload of cool functional programming techniques and streams internally to do their thing. But all this is being done in the context of a nice object-oriented design, a nice architecture that's structured using things like inheritance and overriding and virtual methods and all that kind of good stuff.